Hi guys, it's Erin, and I have a coloring video for you. And I know I haven't done one of these in a while, but I had a request to show how I color with Inktense pencils. And I thought this was a good opportunity as I got this coloring book called Epic Journeys. And it is published by Other Worlds, Icons of Fantasy. And there's four different artists. The artist that did this picture, his name is Mark A. Nelson. And they're all um, they're all people that have worked in the fantasy industry. And pretty much, I think all four of the artists, or maybe there's five, I think it's four. Uh, all of them have worked on Dungeons and Dragons at some point, too. So that's interesting. But they, they all contributed to this book six pages that create a little story and this story is the one that appealed to me most with the little uh, little wizard so I figured I would color this one first and um, you can see that the colors I, I wrote them down so that you can you can see what I'm coloring with and uh, it's it, I, what I did before was I made sure that every time I was going to color something new I tested it out to make sure that that's what I wanted it to look at before I went and uh, you know colored for you on camera, um, you know, coloring for me is you know it's it's a form of relaxation I guess so I didn't want to have too much pressure of oh my god I'm on camera and I just messed it up and that kind of thing. So um, I, you can see that this is done in a lot of sections, and you know there I did uh, I did the two colors for the for the. Um, the stone and now I'm doing moss which this is the first time that I've ever done this technique and I was really surprised when I did it on the the first couple of the first couple of stones because it came out really well and I'm sorry that I am so far away I will actually focus in a little bit uh, in a little bit so please bear with me but um, there's not a whole lot to this it's just there you go see you can see closer now it's just a lot of really light layers and then going over it again with this water brush. This is a Kuratake water brush. And the reason that I like this is you can see how tiny and fine that tip is. And that just, it really helps for especially someone with me who I, I have medical tremors. So it, it helps that I have this, you know, very precise tip. But you can see here that I keep moving around in different areas on the book because as I'm working on one area, the other area is drying and then I can go back with it. Because you never want to put pencil to wet paper because you're not going to be able to make it move. No matter how light you make the layer, the pencils are not going to want to move again. And the thing with ink tents is it's not like a regular watercolor pencil. This is actually ink. So as long as you've fully dissolved it like I am here, it's not going to move again. So it's a it's a sort of a unique form of watercolor pencil. And I've had these for years. I, I, uh, I actually asked Amazon and I got them in 2012. So I've had them for quite a while, but it's only recently that I've figured out how to use them, I think. Um, you know, every medium takes some, takes some learning and stuff like that. So, and of course, the more you color, the better you get at it. So the, there's definitely a lot of that to a factor because I've been coloring for quite some time now. And uh, the coloring books are recent, back in, you know, uh, about October 20, October 2016, recently after our uh, our dog died, and I just didn't, I didn't want to do any art that I had to think about, and coloring I don't have to think a whole lot about, so I thought, well, you know, coloring books are all the rage, and I bet there's cool things for me to get, so. And this was definitely one of those books when I saw it, I was just so excited because I love the whole fantasy idea. I really love this this wizard's six little stories that he has. And then the, the other stories in it too. There's there's three other stories. They're all, you know, they're all very imaginative and fantasy worlds. Like I said, the the artists all work on Dungeons and Dragons, so you you have that kind of a feel to it as well as their own personal expression. Um, and the opposite side has just a couple a couple lines about what they're doing. The, apparently, the wizard is setting off on a uh, a journey to market. And uh, anyway, um, you can see that I don't technically color the way uh, you know the way the Copic tells you to color is they you know say color dark or light to dark. And um, watercolor, you also usually want to color light to dark because it's better to lay that way. But um, I like to color dark to light because I'm weird. <laughs> and I just always have. But yeah, you can see me move around here and, and I'm adding in dark where I had already worked because the paper's drying so fast. 
and um, you have to make sure to control your water, of course, but it helps that I live in a very dry area. I live at uh, 7,000 feet in, uh, in altitude, and so it's it, there's no humidity up here. It's it's very dry, and uh, you know stuff stuff tends to dry really well for me. But you can see in this little section of the video what happens when you oversaturate your paper, and um, you can see me trying to wipe off the water, but you can see it. It's just like. It went all crazy on me, and I don't know why. I think I squeezed the brush way too hard. <laughs> but water management is very important because you have to make sure that you're not going to, you know, A, destroy the paper, but um, it it washes out the ink uh, in this section because I didn't, I didn't control it properly. And even though I am moving around and coloring different areas, I really have to avoid that area because it is so wet right now, and I can't get it to blend correctly. So I... Um, I think I do just end up moving on because, yeah, it's it's not blending the way I want it to because it's oversaturated. And I think at one point, I don't know if the video stops, but at one point I do end up having to take a heat gun to it because it's just way too much water. You know, water brushes do help you a lot with water control because um, they have a little sponge in that clear tip there. You can kind of see it. It's right where my little fingertip is. There's a sponge in there that carefully feeds water onto the bristles. It's not real bristles, they're just plastic. But it carefully feeds water onto it instead of um, instead of like, you know, when you dip water or you dip your brush into water. But yeah, they see I had to <laughs> I had to completely move on to a different section and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna film over here instead. And I, I hope this voiceover isn't completely annoying to listen to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to talk about coloring very well. If you watch my other videos, most of them are just um, uh, they're they're not they're not voiceover. But I thought I would you know give you a little bit of insight into what I'm actually doing and why I'm all over the place. And yeah, it's it's basically trying to deal with water management. And um, Oh, I also wanted to say that this video is time six, so obviously no one colors this fast. This is sped up six times real life, so it's very fast. And uh, this this page itself, I did finish the entire page in one go, which is different for me, but I think it was also partly because I was filming some of it. I didn't film all of it. Like I, I did color the characters off camera just because, like I said, this is sort of a... Um, you know, it's sort of a relaxing thing for me. It's kind of stressful for me to film and make sure that I'm showing you what you need to see or what you want to see without it being an annoying video. So uh, this, off and on, it took me an entire week to do, and um, so it's not it's not a quick process. You know, it, it looks fast because it's speeded up, but it's not a quick process. It's a lot of light layers, and you see me going in with a brush at every single stage. And that's one of the fun things for me. But yeah, it is time consuming and I don't have a job and I'm disabled, so I have the luxury of doing that. So I understand that it can get tedious for some people. But um, here you can see that I'm only using two colors on this, but when, the, when it cuts in a second, there's another color. I added a darker color. You can see in the, the top um, rocky thing up there outcropping where the castle is. I added a darker color for more contrast because I felt that those two colors didn't contrast enough. The um, I wrote it down, but I think I wrote down all, all three of them. I wasn't paying attention when I was talking. Uh, but yeah, I made sure to add that extra color because especially with watercolor, you want to make sure that you're having that beautiful watery look. But contrast is also something that's very important to you know make your make your image stand out. So. I made sure to, to just darken that up a bit. Now here's where I kind of break away from my whole idea of just working in little bits because this is the sky and while it's very small, like you can see how big my hand is versus you know the pencil and the and the image. While it's very small, I needed to make sure that it blended together smoothly. And the way to do that was to make sure that I just wet as much of this little piece of sky as quickly as possible. So you can see me just going and making sure that where those colors touch, that part is staying wet all together so that I don't have lines and delineation between the colors because you really don't want that in the sky. The, the, the real sky doesn't have lines. So <laughs> I didn't want lines in my image, you know, because the sky doesn't have lines. So 
So you see, I made sure to scrub out all of those lines, even in between the yellows, just in case. And I'm, I also colored up into, with the pencil, I colored up into the other colors. And um, I'm just going back on that part that I tested to make the pink darker, because it, it needed it. <laughs> and I'm going to color a little bit of this fairy guy. But uh, after that, I, I, like I said, I did stop the video and just went ahead and colored on my own and you know I colored while I was listening to music or whatever uh, but I will show you some photos so there's photos but I uh, I thought that this guy would look funny if he had pink wings and a pink little outfit so I was working on that but I didn't like um, you can see I'm getting the paper way too wet here don't do that you don't want to do that because it just makes it look gross so <laughs> the paper is way too wet, and I don't know why I'm so far out either. It, it's because my camera doesn't remember settings when I have to turn it off. So, like I said, this is you know days of work, so it's not um, it's not just one collective. I'm sitting here for 12 minutes and coloring the whole darn thing because that's not what happened at all. Um, but I didn't choose a dark enough a dark enough purple to contrast with the, the pink, so it just kind of got all muddy and blah looking in my opinion. So I, I tried to fix it, but you know, oh well. And um, it, it didn't it didn't really want to work for me, but I, I still like the idea if he has a cute little pink outfit and pink wings, because he's like, he's all this, you know, smug little fairy guy. He's got a little smug look on his face, you'll see in a minute uh, on the still photos. But um, but yeah, I, this is the first time that I've colored something A is so large and so detailed with um, with just ink tents. So it was a really good challenge for me because, like I said before, every time I've tried to use them, I, I really struggled with them. And OK, so here's the still photos. I'm not going to have them moved just so you can look at them. And um, so I made sure you can, you can see the difference in the grass and how stuff blends together. And I made sure to get a shot of all the little creatures and details and stuff like that and uh, so yeah I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it wasn't too chatty or annoying and if there's anything that you want to see or that uh, you would like me to color or something just go ahead and let me know uh, all my contact information is in the notes so thank you very much for watching and here's the full photo and I hope you like it all right you have a good day bye